Hey everybody, welcome to our Friday edition of the Gateway Live Update. Our daily kind of gathering together on the internet during this coronavirus epidemic. We welcome you along. It's uh, 12 noon exactly right now. And good afternoon on this rainy, rainy, miserable, chilly April 24th, Friday afternoon. And here gathering uh, on Facebook of all places, the place where we never thought we'd be gathering, is where we're gathering to discuss the word and to pray. We welcome you along. Thank you for joining us, and we're going to get right into where we left off yesterday in Ephesians chapter 2. If you remember, we came to where it said God raised us up and made us alive together with Christ. We can join together with Jesus in our resurrection. And we have talked previously, even last week, about the resurrection power that we have because Jesus rose from the dead. Now we share in that. It's not just some a, a philosophy or a feeling. It's a reality for those who are in Christ. And that's why it says he made us alive together with Christ. We're in Ephesians 2, 5, the end of the verse, for by grace you have been saved. And this is where we want to continue in verse 6. For today it says, and he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. That's what it says literally. That not only have we identified with our becoming alive, but we're raised up together with Jesus. Now again, symbolically, when we're water baptized, we're buried with him and we're raised to walk in newness of life, it says in Romans. There's a resurrection that's pictured in water baptism, but the reality is when you were born again, you remember that? You identified with Jesus and you came to life. And there's a real resurrection there. And so he raised us up together with him and made us sit together in the heavenlies. We also sit together with Jesus in the heavenlies. What does that mean? Well, what your translation usually says heavenly places or heavenly realms. And if you have a good translation, the word realms or heavens or whatever are different because the word realms or places is italicized and heavenly is not. Because the word literally says the heavenlies. Whatever that means, it means out there. We're, we're seated with Jesus who's at the right hand of the Father. We just know it's up. Now, people talk about they know where. We don't really know where, but that's where we're at. Positionally, we are in Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what this says. In chapter 1, it talked about how awesome it was that there's a resurrection and that Jesus is in the heavenly realms and that there's all these principalities and powers and demonic forces out there in the heavenlies. But Jesus is above it all. And now it's saying that me and you, who are in Christ, are joined together. Joined together in Christ in the heavenlies. That's where we are. Doesn't feel like it all the time, does it? Sometimes it might feel like it, but it doesn't feel like it all the time, even though we are seated with Messiah, Jesus, in the heavenlies. That's where we are. Isn't that great? Isn't it awesome to know that we are seated with Christ in heavenly realms and that we positionally, that's where we are. That's where, listen, that's where God sees us. God sees us there by grace. God sees us, not because we deserve to be there, but because Jesus washed us in his blood. And that's where we are. So when God looks at me, he doesn't see me down on the earth having bad thoughts about 
this or fighting with my wife or lusting after that. What God sees is me seated in heavenlies in Christ. And that's why everything that has to do with Christ, being in Christ, is important to me and, and to you who are in him. Because that's where we're at. That's where he sees us, in him. In him. I am in Christ. You are in Christ. And God doesn't look at me and see, oh man, look, he blew it again. What a dumbo. Now, we do do that and blow it again. But God sees us in Christ. That's where God sees us, in Christ. Isn't that exciting? That we're in Christ? And I always say, I've been saying for, I would probably say 30 years now, since I started realizing in Ephesians, in Christ, that if we were to understand in Christ, which we don't, it would answer all of our theology issues. Whatever it is, whatever your theology issue is, it's in Christ and in Christos. That's, that's where my answers are. That's where your answers are. Your answers are in Christ. Things that we don't understand. Things, that's divine election. It's in Christ. We don't understand it. We see it. We see it's a biblical doctrine. We can't figure it out. We lie to ourselves and say it's a mystery when it's really not a mystery. A mystery is what was covered and is now uncovered. But we're in Christ. Isn't it great to be in Christ? It's the best place to be. And that's the point here. It's, listen, your salvation and your coming to the Lord wasn't based and predicated upon your performance in Christianity. That's what I was taught when I was a new believer. Performance, doing this, leading people to the Lord. But it wasn't really that at all. My steadfastness and my position with God had to do with my being in Christ, by grace. Paul the Apostle, we're going to see on Sunday morning, when he started preaching in the Galatian region, he preached that that simple salvation by faith alone and Christ alone. And the people, the religious people there, couldn't believe it because it was too easy. And that's how people are today. How many of you have come to the Lord? And you came to the Lord and religious people told you, no, that's too simple. You're a heathen, drug addict, alcoholic, jerk. Yes, I, I, I am all those things, but I'm in Christ and he's washed me and made me new. And they think that you're nuts. They think you're crazy. We think we're crazy sometimes, don't we? Because it's true. That is exactly what I am. But I am in Christ, seated in him at the right hand of the Father in heavenly realms. That's where I'm at. And that's where God sees me. Just like he talked about the powers and the principalities in chapter 1, Christ is above all. We are in him. And listen, that means there's no higher or better place to be. You want to talk about the place to be? The place to be isn't in Hawaii right now. The place to be is in Christ. Because that's something that lasts forever. Forever. He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That, verse 7, in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. In the coming ages. Now, because those of us who study theology and gone to Bible college and seminary, you think you know everything. Listen, I thought I knew everything too. And understanding grace. Yes, we know the little definitions. Uh, yeah, grace is uh, God's uh, merited, unmerited favor. That's what it is. God's unmerited. And we come up with these words. Grace is God loving us though we're not worthy. And we have all these little things. But I want to tell you the truth here. Listen, we can't really define grace on this planet. What do you mean? Grace is God's receiving, God's unmerited favor upon your life. That's what it is. You don't deserve it. But Jesus deserves it. And God loves you like he loved Christ. So when I read that in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace 
in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. How? Because it's going to take a couple million years for us to click and understand grace. We can't understand grace here. Yes, I know. Listen, we know the acronyms. Uh, G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. And we know the definition. God's unmerited favor to his son. Yeah, we know that. But it's going to take ages to understand and to be shown. Ages. You're not going to get that in this life. And see, religious people have a big issue with this because they can't do they all oh, know they do it by this i led i led that many people to the lord and and i keep a record of a, and and i did that no and, and see it's not about that at all it's about the previous verse being in christ by grace you've been saved being in christ how much did it cost for you to get in christ it didn't cost you anything but it cost god his only son that's what it cost god it cost god a lot it cost God so much for me to be in Christ. It humbles me. It should humble you. Because he loves you. He cares. And when we think about what it cost him and how ungrateful we are, often, not all the time, but often ungrateful, for what Christ does. And I'm in him. And I don't deserve. And you don't deserve. And nobody deserves to be in Christ. We deserve one thing and that's death. That's what we deserve. That's where God's mercy and his grace. And even in this verse, his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God's kind. Though how many times have I betrayed him with my life. And with my mouth. And with my thoughts. And he still keeps me in Christ. He doesn't take me in and put me out of Christ like some religious people teach. It's by grace you've been saved, he said. That in the coming ages he might show the exceeding riches. The coming ages. Coming ages, not now. Don't try to figure out everything now. Don't try to be one of these theologians. You know, I here have several systematic theologies and over in the other bookshelf on that side i have a big systematic theology that tells you classifies everything in theology which is kind of boring really i don't like it as much it's all the different ologies theology theos is god study of god and in theology we have christology study of christ we have soteriology, study of salvation. And we have eschatology, the study of last things and death and all that. So we have all these sections of it. But we're not going to understand it. Nobody can understand God's grace. It's going to take the coming ages to understand it. You are not, listen, you are not going to understand it now. And people that do now are full of pride and full of religious spirits. And they think they're better than everybody. And it doesn't work like that. We're supposed to be humble. Not like the apostles at the Last Supper. Jesus is telling them the most important thing in the world, and they're arguing who's the greatest. No, no. We're supposed to be humble at his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Verses 8 and 9, the next two verses are probably memory verses when you're a new believer. For by grace you saved through faith. We're going to cover that tomorrow on our special Sabbath day, Saturday edition of our Gateway Live update. But I want you to be thinking about not being able to understand grace and really define it. I mean, because there's books I could take out. Listen, I could take out theological books right here and, and, and read you the definitions of grace. They're written by men. But it's going to take eternity guys it's going to take eternity it's not going to take just one time it's not going to take two times it's not going to take some guy who has a gift of teaching to teach you it's going to take god to explain it to you amen amen 
Well, let's pray, and uh, we're going to pray against this coronavirus. Is this every day? Not only now, but we encourage you to join us tonight at 9 p.m. from 9 a couple minutes at least three minutes of prayer it goes real fast i mean we always go 15 to 20 to 30 but you could just pay for pray for three minutes pray against this virus and for the healing of those who have it for wisdom of those who are in leadership pray for the government both for the good people and the bad people and pray for revival because that's the only way around this thing let's and that's the only answer for anything is for god to move upon us so let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we are able to come to you humbly, seeking your face, grateful to you, loving you, Lord Jesus, and that you, even though we're not worthy, place us in yourself, seated at the right hand of the Father. We're humbled by that, Lord, and we're thankful and we're grateful, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to destroy and completely obliterate this coronavirus. Lord, the plague has lasted long enough and it continues. And we ask, Lord, that you would show your hand, that people would give you glory, Lord, that you stay this thing. Just as you did so many times, Lord, your people in the book of Judges, they would get into sin like our nation does. And they would realize they're in trouble with nowhere to turn. They would call out to you you would hear from heaven to deliver. And you would send a deliverer to lead them, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would send our deliverer, the Lord Jesus Christ, to lead us out of this place. Bless us this day, Lord. Be with us. And help us, Lord, to always retain your goodness and kindness toward us. Even when we're wicked, you're always good, you're always kind, and we're so grateful in jesus name amen amen and uh if you've been uh seeking the lord with us again we encourage you to continue to do that don't give up join us tomorrow and don't forget to join us sunday at 10 30 a.m we're in the book of acts paul's first sermon we're going to written sermon that we're going to be able to read the whole thing it's one of the only really two whole messages. It was a long message he gave in Acts chapter 13. You can go check it out, read it ahead. And it even discusses some of the things we've been talking to today, believe it or not. So I want to encourage you to join us on Sunday morning for some worship in the Word and for the Lord's Supper. So if you don't have the elements, if you don't have bread and wine or matzah and grape juice or whatever combination, go get it now. So you'll have it for the Lord's Day. If you need communion kits, we have them here. We're running out of them real fast because they're very hard to get. We're, they're on back order everywhere because people have been using those communion kits. We will be partaking together on the screen on Sunday morning at 1030. Of course, if you can come here and help, we have only room for two or three people extra to come. Uh, we'll have the Lord's Supper here for you. But we encourage you to join in and seek God and bless his name and worship him during this time and to celebrate him. We'll have our uh, weekend newsletter will be coming out. Little email will be coming out in a little bit. And we encourage you to read that. Uh, you'll be able to read it. It's here. It'll be here on Facebook as well as in your inbox. If you're not receiving it, check your junk mail and unblock me. Yours truly from your junk mail. That's what's the matter. That's why you're not reading. Also, our bulletin, our weekly bulletin, will be available there. And they're all on our website. You go to gatewaychristianchurch.com or inyourfaith.org. And all the stuff's right there before you. From past messages you can listen to in order. You can start a book. You can study a book of the Bible. You can use my teachings. There's many good teachers on the internet you could use. And then you could give you could use our giving feature there or your own giving feature from your bank or however you want to do it or write a check and mail it or send in cash we really need the funds i hate to be talking about this i've talked more about money in the last couple of weeks than i ever have hey, during the service 
because I don't like doing that. But the truth is, we're in need, and we thank you. Some of you guys have just blessed us. Looks like you've given you one of your uh, your stimulus checks to Gateway, and we, we're grateful. But and we're very grateful for everything, everything that we're blessed with. So please uh, be praying about that. Pray for us. Listen, if you don't have anything, you can pray. Spend time praying for Gateway. That does a lot, and we really appreciate it. I appreciate your prayers, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until we greet you on the morrow, and I, I really pray that you would allow God, the Holy Spirit, to dwell in you and have his presence just to come upon you. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.